Hello again. This week, crashes see some major players exit Torreno Adriatico and a heart stopping Paris Nice. We're in the Netherlands for the women's Ronde van Drenthe, in Asia for the Tour of Taiwan, and in Sheffield in the UK with an event called the Magnificent Seven. To start though, we shall continue where we left off last week with Paris-Nice, which once again was a particularly aggressive and close for event. The race was a delight for the French with no less than four stage victories out of a possible eight for the home riders. Following Arnaud Demar's stage one win, Jonathan Hiver took stage three on a day that saw 2007 winner Luis Leon Sanchez go into yellow. Jerome Cousin won slightly controversially on stage five. He'd refused to work with Niels Pollitt on the run in and then out sprinted him at the finish. Sneaky. Whilst Rudy Mollard put his local knowledge to good use on stage six. Meanwhile, the stage four time trial had been dominated by Wout Pools. However, a crash the following day in which he sustained a broken collarbone spelled the end of his race. In fact, it was actually a case of double dutch in terms of bad luck that day with Tom de Moulin crashing out of Torreno Adriatico at the same time. Now, Saturday's mountaintop finish was a little too much for race leader Sanchez, who cracked inside the final 10 kilometers. Up front, a well-timed and very strong attack from Simon Yates gave him the stage win and the yellow jersey going into the final day. The so-called race to the sun didn't exactly live up to its name on that final stage, which was held in near biblical conditions. This is what it looked like before the stage. Andre Greipel was the first to the start line, although without another gorilla in sight, he couldn't board Noah's Ark and so settled on impersonating a swimmer instead, while Luis Leon Sanchez was hoping to take flight like Mary Poppins with his umbrella. Anyway, on with the racing, which was red hot, thankfully, from the gun, despite the conditions. Omar Freele drew a break of three clear on the first climb of the day, but a literal crash for Fulgesang and an energy crash for Julian Alaphilippe meant the Spaniard was actually solo by the midway point. However, we then had a big move behind. Marc Soler flying from the reduced peloton on the Côte de Pay with Team Sky's De La Cruz for company. It was a bold move, one that Alberto Contador used twice to try and get the overall win in 2016 and 2017, coming up short on both occasions. This time, however, it worked. Despite some of Mitchelton Scott's best efforts, they were unable to significantly reduce the advantage of the Spanish Armada up front. Ultimately, De La Cruz took a narrow victory in the stage over Freyle, while Soler took third, and it was just the four bonus seconds that he took that separated him from a heartbroken Simon Yates on the overall classification. Soler, still just 24, also won the Best Young Rider award. It was a real coming of age for the Spaniard, himself a former Tour de l'Avenir winner. And it was also great news too for Spanish cycling. Many had speculated that the golden era was passing with Contador and Rodriguez retired and Valverde nearing that point. Or at least you would have thought so anyway. However, with Soler winning the GC, De La Cruz winning the last stage and Lander winning in Italy, although more on that later, Spanish cycling is looking very strong indeed. Strong as well, in fact, because Marc Soler is GCN's Rider of the Week. It takes some serious cojones to attack from a distance when you're in sixth overall at a race like Paris and risk everything for the win. For that, we salute you. Terreno Adriatico kicked off last Wednesday with the traditional team time trial on the Mediterranean coast. No surprises perhaps to see world champions BMC take the win there, although they were pushed close by Mitchelton Scott. The first stage also saw the first high profile exit. Mark Cavendish crashing at 60 kilometers an hour, fracturing a rib and taking plenty of skin off in the process. It's been a tough start to the year for the Manxman, who must be wondering when some good fortune will come his way. Get well soon, Mark, from all here at GCN. Day two saw the first stage win of the year for Marcel Kittel, always a relief for a sprinter, whilst on Sunday we were treated to the first uphill finish into Trevi. There, former ski jumper Primoz Roglic leapt from a surprise bunch, displaying some incredible power to hold them off and keep them at bay. The Queen stage of the race came on day four, featuring a new climb to Sonano Sosseto. Out front, Miguel Angel Lopez tried, but faded, whilst Mikel Lander looked cool as a cucumber. He bridged first to Rafa Maika and Fabio Aru, then held them off and a late surging George Bennett to take his first victory in Movistar colours. Meanwhile, an untimely mechanical for Geraint Thomas saw him lose 40 seconds 
and the race lead, which instead it went to BMC's Damiano Caruso. Adam Yates's victory the following day meant that there were two consecutive stage wins for the Yates twins in France and Italy respectively, whilst Mikhail Kwiatkowski's third place and four bonus seconds put him in the overall lead. Now the stage itself paid tribute to the late Michele Scarponi, who lived close to the finish line in Filotrano. Astana invited his two young children onto the team bus in the morning, and fittingly, Scarponi's feathery friend Frankie the Macaw made an appearance both during the stage next to the Willia Trestinia team car and at the stage finish too. The event continues today, Monday, with a sprinter stage and concludes tomorrow with a flat 10 kilometer individual time trial. Basically, we think the race is Kwiatkowski's to lose. Hopefully that is not the GCN curse. The Women's World Tour continued on Sunday with the Ronde van Drenthe. The one-day classic features multiple sectors of cobblestones, the first of which came a little after the 20 km mark, and even at this early stage it was enough to split the peloton into multiple groups, although it did come back together. The race then split again on the Vanberg, which is a man-made climb, and man has actually made it out of rubbish. It is literally a climb up a landfill site, 400 metres long at 9%. That is a lot of rubbish. However, despite multiple attacks there and a particularly aggressive final 30 kilometers, the race did come down to a sprint from a reduced group. Launching her effort with a long way to go was Amy Peters, but such was the strength of both her and the tailwind that she held on to take the win. And then continuing her impressive start to the season with a second place was Alexis Ryan of Canyon SRAM, fresh from her maiden pro win at the Drenthe Acht also this week, and Chloe Hosking of Ali Cipollini was in third. Despite finishing 23rd, Anna van der Breggen retains the overall lead in the World Tour standings, which continues with the Trofeo Alfredo Binder this coming Sunday. The five-day Tour de Taiwan began on Sunday, with 19 teams and over 200 bike riders competing in the 2.1 ranked event. Stage one, a circuit race around Taipei, was won by Hayato Okamoto, who benefited from a particularly well-drilled lead out from the Japanese national team. Okamoto was particularly impressive himself though, just 22, he led the bunch from over 250 meters to go, but such was his strength that nobody was able to come round him. Robbie Hucker, winner of the 2016 race overall, won stage two from a break of 12 riders, sailing into the race lead in the process. Chris Harper of the Benelong Swiss wellness team was brought back with 1.5k remaining, and it was Hucker riding for team UKYO who best negotiated a particularly fast and technical final kilometer. The race concludes on Thursday, although I'm not sure if I've actually mentioned it, but Matt and I actually raced ourselves in Taiwan last year, Emma did as well, actually, and, um, and she absolutely smashed us. We shall finish this week's racing news show in Sheffield. The latest quirky event that we want to draw your attention to is called The Magnificent Seven, and it took place on Sunday. It draws inspiration from the Pittsburgh Dirty Dozen, in that it's not a continuous race from start to finish. The event is instead neutralized between the seven closed road climbs, at the foot of which the riders are then unleashed in a race to the top. The winner of the event is whoever accumulates the most points at the finish line of each climb. 123 riders lined up for this year's event, and in the men's category, Kieran Savage started as he meant to go on, taking the first two climbs ahead of Joe Clark, both riding for Cycling Sheffield. Savage went on to win five of the seven climbs, but some superbly consistent riding from Andy Nichols pushed him close. Meanwhile, Rebecca Goodson was close to a clean sweep in the women's, winning six out of a possible seven climbs. It looks like one for lasty, if you ask us, so make sure you get involved in the comments section if you would like to see him there as well. He is a sucker for peer pressure. Right, well that is the end of another racing news show. If you're wondering about the first round of the UCI Cross Country World Cup in Stellenbosch, then make sure you head over to our friends at GMBN who also have a weekly race wrap up. Some familiar faces there, including Pauline ferrand Prevost and Mathieu van der Poel. Don't forget as well to like and share this video. And then if you'd like to see six sneaky tips to help you go faster, click just down there.